as well send me your picture. Uh, because I want, I, you know, I've been through a lot. These two weeks, uh, three weeks, nako, na COVID. The whole family experience, we are infected by COVID. Uh-huh. You know, do you know that? That my wife was hospitalized, my daughter almost died. Oh, man. 30% of, his, of her lungs collapsed. It's a miracle. The doctor told me, Bishop, the, the patient, if, they got, if the virus got his lung 20%, most of them died. But your daughter is 30%. But now he is alive. Oh, I told her, no, he, he, she can't die because she got an assignment. <laughs> Sabi ko sa doctor, she can't die because she got an assignment from God. She's not yet finished. She have to live. That's why God produced miracle out of her life. And the doctor said, Bishop, I believe on you. <laughs> Opo, kamuntik po mamatay anak ko last, last week po. Kamuntik po siya mamatay. About two weeks ago. Wow. Sino po siya? Si Grace? Is it Grace? Si Gra- Grace. Grace. Grace po. Grace. Grace almost died because of COVID. Uh, I lost two leaders. They died. Rupino and Ricky. You know, Rupino, he was able to visit Canada. Uh, he trained the people down there in Canada and he was able to visit Colombia last, last January. And it's so sad. I lost two leaders. No? And the whole worship team and the whole media team died. Oh, died. Uh, contact, contacted by Rus. Mm. That's more than 20 people. So the attack was so severe. No, and uh, literally, each, each person should be spent like the, the father of one of my primary 12 got infected and they spent like a million pesos wow. Wow. for the hospitalization wow. cost. Okay, I, uh, Grace spent like 600,000, my wife spent like 400,000. Wow. Mm-hmm. It's not a joke to, be, to have COVID in the Philippines. Wow. It's not a joke. Wow. So, it's been, a, it's been a dark moment of my life. The darkest moment of my life. I've never experienced that. No? And sometimes when you are in that situation, when you are in thick darkness, you don't know what to do. You don't know what to do. Honestly, <laughs> I'm embarrassed. I'm a bishop. Don't know what to do. Honestly, <laughs> I, I almost talk to myself. Oh, really? You're a bishop, and then you behave like this. But I've never been this before. You know. <laughs> Imagine, I I I, con- I contacted the, the COVID, and I was like, uh, we. We go to the passive swab test and they discover that Bishop, you are positive. Oh, Grace is positive. Oh, Pastora Church is positive. We are shocked. So immediately we go to the house and isolate ourselves. But the next day, my daughter is struggling breathing. So I put the oximeter. I prepare myself, I buy thermometer, I buy oximeter, I bought oxygen, I bought oxygen. So I put Grace on an oxygen tank and by the time uh, we have doctors here also. So by the time that the doctor told me, Bishop, we have to bring Grace to the hospital now. And one by one, all my media team and my worship team, one by one, sending message to me, I'm positive, I'm positive, I'm positive, I'm positive. Imagine you keep on hearing contamination is happening to my church. And then when I look into that, the whole print is the air conditioning unit. We got into that one room, the studio, and somebody sneak in that we don't know that COVID positive. And he begin to breathe on the air. And then all this virus goes to the air conditioning. And in a matter of time, it replicates. And then, boom. Everybody was shocked. Oh my God, the whole worship team, the whole media team is contaminated. 
it spread to past because the barrier here is totally different in the past. So that night, uh, the infections spread so fast to the point that in one day, we got 12,000, 14,000, 15,000 a day of infection. Every day, yeah. It used to be like 700, 300 a day. This time, it's 12,000, 15,000. We're all shocked because we don't realize that it was the third wave. So it was so severe. So we brought Grace in the hospital. And to our shock, the hospital is filled with people. The people are lying on the parking lot, waiting for their turns. Literally, some of them died in the parking lot because the doctor cannot accommodate more patients. Oh, well, it's good we have contact doctors in my church and they were able to open up one bed for grace. But it took him another day to get into that bed and she had to stay on the corridor of the hospital. The next day, my wife is becoming weaker and weaker and the doctor advised me to bring your wife to the hospital. But no hospital is available with that um, magnitude of infection uh, rapidly. I find myself going to Pampanga. Imagine I'm, I'm in Las Piñas. I have to drive 100 kilometer plus just to be in Pampanga to put my wife in a hospital. And then one by one, Another disciples need to be on the hospital and we can't find hospital. Then Rupino was reported to me that he was contaminated, need to be brought to hospital. So we have to go to another hospital, but he need to queue. And then in the afternoon, he was able to put on that room, isolation room, and the next day he died. The next day he died. The doctor told me because the magnitude of numbers that the hospital cannot handle everybody. Rupino died because the, the hospital cannot provide a ventilator, cannot be, provide a, a high dose of oxygen. He died. He collapsed. And then he passed out and then he died. That's what happened to me. Imagine how dark it is when I am in that mood middle. I have the same virus attacking my whole family who killed Rupino. The next day, Ricky died, another disciple. Imagine how dark it is when you are in my house, you, I'm not allowed to go to the hospital. I was recovering during that time. The only thing I do is to pray. So dark, my brother and sister, so dark. And But the Lord helped me. The Lord rescued me. That's what my experience. First time in my life that two of my disciples died and my wife and my daughter are struggling in the hospital. And I was told by the doctor that Grace in a, is in a very critical situation. Honestly, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. It was too dark until God gave me his word that I will help you. Isaiah 41 verse 13, I will help you. I said, Lord, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. I just want to go to you. And then I closed my eyes and I told God, Lord, just hold my hands. I don't know where to go. Just, just hold my hand, Lord. I don't know where these things go. Just hold my hand, Lord. Guide me. Then I was able to sleep. That's the only time I was able to sleep. The next day morning, and, you know, Propino is dead. The, the, here in the Philippines, when you, are, you died of COVID, you will be cremated the next day to avoid contamination of others. 
it was so fast, honestly, it was so fast, it was so, it was overwhelming. And I'm glad and I'm happy that many people pray, including you, you keep praying for us. And that's why this morning I'd like to say thank you so much for your prayers. It helps a lot, no? It helps a lot. And my, my wife and my daughter is now in the house. They are now in the house, back in the house. And the first time I saw my daughter, I cried. I almost lost my daughter. My doctor told me, it's a miracle that grace. Because 30% of her lungs were captured by the virus. Just 20% is enough to kill her. But your daughter was so strong. She fight. I said, God is with her. I learned so many things out of these things, my brother. I learned so many things. And my conclusion about this is that we still have God. We still have His promise. And we still have His presence. Wala po ako. I have nothing in my hands. But I have something in my heart. I have God. I have His promises. And I have His presence. That's the only thing I have. You know, when you are in that situation, your money cannot do anything. All your achievement, all your success is become powerless. Zero. Everything is zero. But I'm glad I'm not, I don't lose God. I can still remember His promise. And I can still feel His presence. If I look outside, I was overwhelmed. It was so dark. It was overwhelming. Everything is negative. Everyone, people are dying. I have to learn how to look. Not to look from the outside, but to look from the inside. Because if outside in happened to me, I'm dead. I will quit. I will run in fear. But I begin to look inside out. I realized that I have God. No, He got a promise to me. Yes, Lord, your presence will never leave me nor forsake me. And then God, God gave me His word, Psalms 118, verse 17. I will not die. I will live. Or I will proclaim what the Lord has done. That promise, I hold on to that. That's why I'm telling you, in the middle of crisis, be sure you have God. You have your promises and you have his presence. And then God remind me two things why I will not die, why my family will not die. Two things. Or yet, it's not yet finished. Your mission is not yet finished. Your, your vision is not yet finished. You have to go back to your assignment. You have to go back to your assignment. You will not die. You will live because you have to proclaim what the Lord has done. Alam niyo po, when the time God gave me that verse, I, I begin to see the light at the end of the tunnel. It was so dark. But when God gave me that word, this time I got something in my heart. Lord, I thank you because God is within me. His promises empower me. And Lord, thank you because you promised me that you will never leave me nor forsake me. And then God remind me, Uriel, you will not die because you have an assignment, Uriel. You have mission, you have vision. Alam niyo po, yun lang po pinaalala sa akin ng Diyos. That reminds me, that's why I can survive. You know, at the end of the day, you don't see your money. You don't see your achievement. The only thing I saw, God, promises, presence. The only thing I saw, your assignment, Orion. You have a mission. You have a vision. You know, it strengthened me to know that. It strengthened me to know that. No? When you are in the darkest moment of your life, you need to realize that. You know, the, the truth is this. 
when David is fighting Goliath, I can say the full Goliath don't understand who is his, who is who is David. He was trying to mess up with someone that he did he didn't know. Do you know that David before he fight Goliath? Everybody, everyone is overwhelmed. Now listen to this very carefully. When you are confronting difficult situation, humongous problem, humongous challenges in your life, what is the reaction of Saul and the Israelites? Saul was paralyzed. Meaning to say, he can't do anything. When you are paralyzed by the overwhelming challenges in front of you like Goliath, Saul was paralyzed. Meaning to say, he can't do anything about it. No action, no movement, paralyzed. Look at the army of Israel. When Goliath confronted him, in fact, he goes to their borders. He crossed over the border, and that is illegal. That is war. But instead of this, the army of Israel, the moment they saw Goliath is crossing the border to their borders, they supposed to attack Goliath. No. They run. They flee in fear, the Bible said. You see that? Saul was paralyzed. The people flee in fear. This is the first time I faced the real Goliath of my life. Body bags are beginning to come in. Your own family members, your daughter, your wife is in trouble fighting for their life. Goliath don't understand who's David. By the way, David, before he get into that battle, few years back, he was anointed by God to become the next king. Meaning to say, this little boy was part of God's plan. God has a great plan for this little boy, David. Second, it's not just a plan. David finally discovered his assignment. He will become the next king. So when David stand, stood in front of Goliath, David knows who you are, who he is. And you must know who you are. He knows that I am the next king. God assignment was given to me. And in fact, he anointed me, empowered me to become the next king. For Goliath, he was so full to fight the little boy David. But for Goliath, he know who he is. He knows that I got God in my life. I got his promise. I got his presence with me. And I am on a mission. I will become the next king. Well, we, on our own eyes, we see this as a battle between the people of God and Goliath. But God see it differently. God is setting up something here. Because David is about to become the next king and Saul is about to go out. Saul out, David's in. But God need to create an atmosphere where David will become acceptable to the people to become the next king. And the, the only way for people to accept David is that David defeat the enemy of Israel. By killing Goliath. That's the picture of God. You see, sometimes we see the battle between Goliath. No, you don't see the set up. It was set up by God. Poor Goliath. You don't see that. And sometimes that's the overwhelming situation of our life. We are overwhelmed. But we don't see the real picture what's going on. We, don't, we really don't see the picture what's going on. And I look at myself during that moment and God allow me to see, oh yeah, this is a setup for you. This is my divine setup for you. Uh, so David was set up by God. 
Goliath was set up by God. David is standing in front of this humongous uh, soldier named Goliath. But he stood there, listen to this, with God's assignment, with God's plan. Never ever face your Goliath without that. And you know what? When you are facing problems and difficulties, it's so easy to forget that the God who called us as a pastor, that the God who chose us as a pastor, the God who gave us the assignment, the God who anointed us, and sometimes he's not there. No, no, that's a lie. David is, is very clear sa time po na yun. So if I would look into my Bible in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, let me read this so that I could relate and you could relate, okay? In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, okay? Let me read in verse 32. David said to Saul, Let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Let no one lose heart. That's the word. Don't lose heart. You know, when I was confronted by this humongous difficulties in my life situation, God speak to my, do not lose heart or yet. I almost lose heart. It means, don't lose your mind. Okay? And then, he got a guts. He said, your servant will go and find him. So look at how Saul responded. He said this. Saul replied, you are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man and he has been a warrior from his youth. The expert of war began to talk to him. This expert of war is paralyzed. They are fearful. And then he is giving advice. Ganun po talaga ang mundo ngayon. Sila nga tanga eh. Tapos ikaw, ikaw pa sasabihin. Sila pa advice eh. He saw David as young and ex- inexperienced. Then, I, let me ask you, Saul. Do you saw that, that that little boy is anointed by God to become the next king? Did you see that? Did you see that this guy, David, was chosen by God and put an assignment upon his life? Do you see that? No, the only thing you see is his physical size. The only thing you saw is the age of David. The size of David. The age of David. The inexperienced man. You don't know that this man is with assignment. You don't know that this man, that because of his assignment, he was anointed and empowered by God. You mishandled the truth, Saul. You got the wrong information, Saul. So David, the Bible said, but David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. And when a lion or bear and carried up a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from his mouth. And when he turned on me, I seized it by the hair, struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Palestine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw, the lion, the paw, the bear, will rescue me from the hand of this Palestine. How to turn your fear into faith? Listen very carefully. David reminded himself of his track records. He looked at his resume. Because the resume was questioned by Saul. You're young. You are young. And you are inexperienced. Well, that's what you saw. But you don't see my resume, sir. You know what is my resume? I killed lion. Huh? I killed lion, sir. And I also killed bear. You know what is the meaning of that? 
you should have reference when you face your Goliath. Pero na ba yung reference? Do you have resume? Do you have the necessary? Can you pass the required resume? Apparently, Goliath in the eyes of Saul is disqualified. No, he's not disqualified. Look at his credentials. I kill a lion, sir. I kill a bear, sir. That's my credentials. How do you have your credentials if you keep, your, if you keep on running? You keep, you keep on running. How can you have credentials? You keep, you, you keep yourself paralyzed in the situation. Do you think you can develop your resume? Well, I'd like to announce to you, a man standing in front of you right now, talking to you right now, you know, uh, just to tell you, I just add another credentials. <laughs> I killed the COVID. That's another resume become part of my life. Because in the middle of that conflict, my giant will appear in front of me. I don't forget my God. I remember his promises. I remember his word that he will never leave me nor forsake me. I still remember how I'm doing my missions and visions. And I can say in the last 32 years, I have recorded so many conquest events of my life. Enough to remind myself, You have killed lion or yell. You have killed the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will die. How come many people today have a lot of credentials? Their resume is filled with experience. You know why? They are not afraid to face the realities. They were strong and courageous facing the problem facing situations. They are not afraid. And I learned my lesson. If I back down, if I hide in fear, I just lose my resume. Yung pala, God was trying to update and upgrade my resume. So the next time you have a difficult situation, overwhelming situation, Maybe God is just developing and upgrading your resume. Well, for David, he was just a shepherd. Now he became the next king. Is that upgrade? But you cannot be a king unless you defeat Goliath. Because at the back of standing Goliath, there is a throne waiting for David. There is a throne waiting for David. I like, da I, I like David because when he stood there, he remembered the Lord. The Lord has rescued me from the paw of the lion. The Lord has rescued me from the paw of the bear. The Lord, the Lord, he always say that. Oh, how good it is. Eh, ang problema po, when we back down, when we quit, when we surrender from every challenges of our life, That's why if I were you, you might be in the middle of the darkest situation of your life. Our people might be there. So we have to teach our people. I really like to encourage everybody. Everybody will go through that. Everyone will face Goliath. You know why? Because God is about to update your resume. God is about to upgrade your resume. Uh, it's been a while you've been a shepherd, David. It's time for you to become the king. But before you become a king, you have to kill your Goliath. Okay? Remember the lion, David? Remember the bear, David? Yeah. Your God is faithful to your promise, David, right? Yes, Lord. Your God is with you. The presence is you, right? Now, I have anointed you. Now you have a mission now. You have a vision. I give you assignment. You don't face your problem without an assignment. You see, that's our dilemma. 
when we are when we are overwhelmed with problem, we forget our assignment. Without even knowing that your assignment is the one who will empower you to defeat your Goliath. The plan of God, the assignment of God, is the only thing that can make you survive. Because until you finish your assignment, you are immortal. I'm immortal, brother. Why? Assignment not yet finished. Vision and mission not yet finished. No sickness can kill me. I like Rupino before he died. You know what happened to Rupino before he died? The wife is telling me he was, she was crying because I don't know what happened to Rupino, Pastor. We checked the oximeter. She got 39. It goes down to 30. Suddenly, he stood up on his bed and he said, he shout at the top of his spirit. You know what he said? He shout like this, Pastor. I have fight the good fight of faith. I have finished the course. I live unto the Lord. I die to the Lord. I belong to the Lord. Back. Then he died. Whoa. I said, what? Yes, Pastor. Before he died, he said, I have finished my race. I run the race. I finished my race. I fight the good fight of faith. That's what he, he was shouting, Pastor. So I grabbing the manyot. You know, some of you will die asking, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> Lord, I repent from my sin. Lord, forgive me. That's what you do man, before you die. Grabe ka, mamamatay ka na lang. Puro ka pa rin, sorry. You mean you are dying still repenting? Why? Because you can say that word. I have fight the good fight of faith. I have finished my race. If I die, I die unto the Lord. If I live, I live unto the Lord. So whether I live or die, I belong to the Lord. Krabi, that is a hero shout. I believe when he died, the whole heaven clapped their hands. Finally, Pinong is home. That's the shout of heaven. And they're clapping their hands. Because the guy before he died, you don't know the story of Pinong. Do you know that next week before he died, after he died, the next week, we're about to open our television ministry. We've been praying for 32 years. Last week, we have just started our television ministry. Imagine, I'm on television every week, twice a week, watched by millions of Filipino. Guess who? Who prepared that for me? Rupino. He set up everything and even the the television network told me, Bishop, I like your team. They're so excellent. Your people are brilliant. They were able to produce TV quality better than us. So I go, that's my guys. And I look at Rupino, I said, this guy is brilliant. The next week, they die. Oh, Rupino died. Before the first broadcast, Rupino died. And then I begin to collect the untold story. Oh, Rupino, before he died, he finished everything. He prepared the televisions. He set up every template. He set up every program. He set up everything. He prepared the people. They're ready to go. Because I have to go. So the first time I go to the televisions, record lang po kasi boy pa siya record ko yun. Still arrive when I... I was watching myself, watching the television. I was crying. Because the, may, the guy who make it happen died. Jesus is the mediator, right? Mediator. You take away the word door, it becomes media. Jesus is the original mediator, the media. Media means you will get an information, okay? Original information so that you can give to people. Jesus is the mediator. He will tell you the right information how to be saved because he's the mediator. God show me, Oriel. The media is keep on distorting truth. The media keep on perverting truth. The media bring lies to people. You watch the television, 
both men are kissing. That's a lie from the devil. Huh? Everything in media are lies, most of them. Now, the question is, where is the mediator? Where is the real media? Where is the real media? Can Jesus still bring the good news to people? Well, what if I don't know that I am entering the biggest battle ground, the worst battle ground? Because I am about to become the next mediator. I'm not Jesus, but I will be used by God to bring the good news to the people without a light, without perversion, without distortion of truth, original information. Because my, my, uh, my preaching will become the messenger to people. And Rupino prepared everything. Kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, my experience is totally sabi ko nga Lord there are so many untold stories here Lord why these things happen to us and some of the untold stories here, I, today I, is, I'm sharing it to you Satan launched a massive attack on Dulos for Christ because Dulos is going to the media Rupino prepared our, he was the one who prepared our YouTube channel, our live streaming with Odi, with my son Daniel, uh, the podcast and the radio. He prepared everything before he died. Everything was set, then he died. This is a confrontation between the devil and the Dulles for Christ Church. That's the, that's the untold story why Rupino died. He targeted Rupino because he is the one. He targeted me and my family because we are the one who work front liners for this media. Ako nagpipreach, si Grace ang nagpipreach sa youth. My wife is preaching on the crossover. I preach on, my, on the television. Rupino is the one who handled everything, the technical things. Kinul sell kami ni Satanas pare. But Satan forget that we have a God who gave us the promise who will never leave us nor forsake us. Did he kill Rupino? No. The Rupino just finished his assignment and it's, it's time for him to go. Goliath don't understand that he is praising a man with God's assignment. It doesn't matter. Well, it's good for you when you were young, you got your assignment, huh? And be sure that when you become old, you don't forget that. Because that is the only reason why we live here on earth, our assignment. Huh? With or without problem, with or without uh, money, with, uh, even in a worse situation, let us not forget, we're still on an assignment. So, my brother and sister, I want you to realize this truth. When Goliath faced David, he thought that he's just a boy. So he just mocked David. He mocked the people of Israel. And he mocked God. Without his knowledge, that's foolishness, Goliath. That's foolishness, Goliath. You are facing a man with assignment. You know what? I want you to realize something here. You don't know how powerful is your assignment. You don't know why God anoints you for that assignment. You know, the worst thing that can happen to a pastor is that he forgets his assignment and he was overwhelmed by the problem. I don't know about you, but you know what? In the middle of this pandemic, this is the time that I launched the, TV, the television ministry. During this pandemic situation, this is the time I increase the level of war against the devil. Well, I have, I have some casualty. But I tell you, I gain more grounds now. I develop an upgraded resume. 
I got more experience now, brothers. I got more experience. I've been through a lot, not to destroy me, but God just simply today, I can say, my brother and sister, he just upgraded my life. I used to have only, I killed, I killed, I killed the lion. I, killed, I used to have that resume. But now it's included. I killed the lion. I killed the, jo the, the bear. And now I kill a giant. I become a giant killer now. I have just upgraded. So I come out victorious, my brother. Uh, my wife is alive. My daughter is alive. Most of the worship team right now are positive, negative, COVID-free. Most of my media men are COVID. Only one guy named Julius is still in the hospital. But the whole team are now in, it's now COVID-free. Healed and victorious. We lost. We lost to one top leaders and we lose another disciple. There are two body bags we have. But I proclaim and pronounce no more body bugs here. Okay, no more body bugs here. Praise the Lord. Alam mo nyo, this morning, ang dami nagte-text sa akin. So many people texted me, Bishop, negative na po ako. Bishop, negative na po ako. Praise God. And then sabi ko, get ready. Get ready. Because on Sunday, I will record my television messages. This coming Sunday, I said, just get ready. We will, we will, you know, we will go and proceed to our assignment. You know what happened to our church right now? Huh? We become more excited about our mission and assignment because I've been telling my people, it's too good that while we are fighting, we don't forget our assignment. We don't forget our vision. Meaning to say, in the middle of this pandemic, we will still fulfill our assignment. We will conquer. We will conquer. We will never stop. Why? We have all the reason not to stop. We still have the God of heaven. Hallelujah. We still have our God's promises. We still the presence of God is with us. Let's do the missions and let's conquer our visions. The whole church is pumped up. The whole church is excited. You know what happened? We, we pray every morning. We pray every morning. Nakasum lang po kami prayer. I was shocked more than a thousand people is attending every morning on that prayer time. Every morning. I teach every morning. I uh, teach na po like siguro mga mag, mag isang buwan ha? More than 25 days na. And I saw how the people get connected because I shared to them our darkest moment. They are part of it. But I reiterate and put more emphasis on God, promises, and presence. And then I put emphasis on assignment like mission and our visions. I put emphasis, we can do better now. We have a better resume. Huh? We, we, we achieve more because of this. And that's why they are getting ready again. And I like to tell you, my brother and sister, we're good. We're back and we are ready again. That's my testimony. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. Thank you so much for your prayer. Just to let you know, we're back. We're ready again. And again, we will be fulfilling our assignment with God. Okay, now, before I, cl I, cl I close, I'd like to give you some things to do right now. Okay? Uh, I don't know what happened to the sa US. Uh, do you have your third wave? Or wala kayo third wave? Do you have your third wave? Because in the Philippines, my third wave, kayo, meron, wala. You don't have third wave, okay? Meaning to say, if you don't have third wave, you have more, less restriction, okay? You have less restriction, uh, you have more opportunity. So, America has less restriction, it means you have more opportunity. That's what I want to, I want to start on that. You have now less restriction, meaning to say you have more opportunity. What if you're a pastor, you have less restriction and you don't grab the opportunity? So I want you to do this specifically right now. I want you to get ready. If you can have your notes, I want you to write it down, okay? Okay, in the middle of pandemic, you know how, how this virus works? By using the principle of replications. Because if he 
if the virus come to your body, he just replicate himself. And by replicating, he, he conquer. God, make it clear to us right now. You need to learn how to replicate your ministry. Now, tingnan nyo. Ano ba yung nag-work before? How that church operate before? Can you make a replicate the church life? You can make a replication of your church life in a new way. And the moment you replicate that, like for example, cell group in the past is different right now from ourselves. Discipleship in the past, a discipleship right now is different. But at least you replicate what is happening in the past in a new way and then multiply it immediately. Because replication like virus, they do it rapidly. Oh my God, most pastors are too slow. You are too slow to find the newest way of doing things. That's why you need to talk to everybody. You need to talk to your fellow pastor in New York. You have to take uh, exchange note so that we could uh, discover the replicate now. Like for example, what if Pong was able to establish a, a powerful training, a replica of the past, but in a new way, in a new methods, and it's working effectively. You better get that and replicate it and immediately, rapidly replicate it. Now, look at this. What if you fail to replicate what is happening in the past to bring it now? Yun ang nangyari sa church, namatay, nangunti, naubos. Because they fail to replicate what is the right thing to do now. now. Let me use the word rapid replication. Rapid means you have to be fast. Don't be slow. Like for example, how do you do cell group now? Well, our cell group before is this and we are growing. Okay, can you make a replicate right now digitally? Can you make a replicate right now on a Zoom? You have to be good on that. You must be good on replications. And you have to do it rapidly. What about discipleship? Well, discipleship in the past without COVID is this. But right now, no more. We are restricted. We have, you know, but we have something different now. Replicate. Find and discover the best ministry strategy and replicate that. Well, the truth is this, you can ask one of your friends, he might be doing the right thing now and you don't know. Huh? He might be doing the right thing now and you don't know. And he is making a lot of score, you know, he is replicating, you know, powerfully, the cell is multiplying, the, the training is ongoing and, and the numbers is increasing. Why are you waiting, looking at the looking at the moon and you don't know what to do, why don't you just learn from somebody so that you can replicate that? You understand what I'm saying here? So the key to our situation right now during COVID is the power of replication. Go to your friends, go to that G12 pastor who are doing, this, are do, doing the vision effectively, replicate that. Bring it to your church, try to work on it, develop it and innovate it until it works. Replicate, replicate, replicate. And you have to do it rapidly. Because the key to conquest is the rapid replication. That's the first step. Okay. Can we replicate the church life before in a new way? That's a question. So I hope you replicate. Try to work on your replication. Like for example, soul winning. What is the replica new replication of soul winning? What is the new replication of cell group training, discipleship. You have to replicate that. Find out what is working and not working. And then throw away all those not working. Just get the work. If you don't know anything about it, then ask somebody who work on it. Yung iba kasi, wala nang nangyayari, nakatunga nga pa. Don't do that. Huh? Do not be motivated by fear. You don't, you know, you are afraid when you don't do anything. Fear paralyzes you. But when faith is moving in your heart like David, you are moving into action. You are moving forward, not running away. Look at David. Because faith, because David has that faith, he moved in 
to face the enemy. He never ran, he moved in, he act in faith, and he proclaimed something in faith. That's what you need to do. Replications. The manifestation of our faith, not fear. Okay? If you fail to replicate, because fear paralyzes you. Your brain stops thinking. Your brain needs to discover new ways. New ways of doing things so that you can successfully replicate what the Bible is telling us. Eh, maniwala kayo. Iba na, iba na cell group ngayon. The cell group is totally different now. The discipleship is totally different now in the way we do. The mission is the same, but the methods are different now. We are living in a digital, ano na ngayon, digital platform na. Huh? I hope you understand. I hope you get that. Huh? Do not insist to do your ways in the past. Come on. You need to unlearn. You need to relearn. You need to learn. To produce replica. So ngayon, after a year and a, a year and oh, yeah, after a year, I got another replica of cells now. Iba na cell ko ngayon, iba na training ko ngayon, iba na discipleship ko, iba na soul winning ko ngayon. Why? I was able to produce a replica. Nag-evangelize pa rin, nag-disciple pa rin. We still training people, we still multiplying cells. We still do that. But different. But it's a replica. Second, you have to maintain your right culture. Okay? It's very dangerous that because of this COVID, you develop a bad culture now. What is the bad culture? Yung katunganga lang, paralyzed. That's a bad culture. The culture of waiting is coming. Wait, wait lang tayo, wait lang tayo. That's a bad culture. Listen very carefully. I'm struggling. I'm fighting for, for, for so that my church maintain our right. Do you know that before COVID, my church developed so many right culture existing in my church. And I have to maintain that. So what are the, this culture? Okay, the culture of evangelism. That's the number one. The culture of discipleship is still there. No matter what happened, the people need to be disciples. The culture of training. The culture of conquest. The culture of worship. The culture of prayer. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You have to maintain that. The truth is many churches today, they lost the culture. They, they, don't, they don't have prayer in the past. Lalo ngayon, no, wala na yung prayer. They don't evangelize. Lalo ngayon, wala na evangelize. But you have to, to maintain your right culture. Do you see a new culture in a different environment? Because we don't have a different environment, but is the right culture there? In that new environment, that will be the, the challenges for every one of us. We now have in the, we are now in the middle of the new environment. This is totally different environment. But you need to put that right culture in that new environment. I believe we are in a difficult environment, but the culture must continue. The culture of prayer, the culture of worship. The culture of evangelism and discipleship. The culture of cell group, community life. The culture of relationship. The culture of submission. The culture of obedience. Name it. We need that culture. Eh, ang malungkot po dahil nagkaroon na tayo ng negative atmosphere. Then our culture become negative as well. Number three, write it down. We need creativity for effectivity. Okay? We need creativity for activity. Effectivity. We have to create something. We have to create something that works for our visions and goals. You know, I try to be creative for the sake of conquering my goals. 
conquering my vision. Huh? We need to be creative huh? to continually because the, the students are no longer in the campus. They are now online. How can I, I, how can I penetrate that online atmosphere? So I, I need to create. One of the one of the most powerful things that happened after my dilemma, my darkest situations, do you know that I was able to come up with an invisible hospital in my church? I, have, I was able to build invisible hospital. So this, this is how I innovate and create. I, go, I gathered all these doctors, all these nurses, and I said, and I told them, you see, we have more than 20,000 congregations. We have like 15,000 families to 18,000 families. Everybody is in danger. They can't go to the hospital because the hospital is filled. Come on, I want, I want to pray for you and anoint you for this assignment. You know, every dollar for Christ before they go to hospital, they go to our invisible hospital. Our doctors are available to help them. So instead of catching up to that hospital, my team will be the one to look into them, to look into their situation and giving them ideas what to do before COVID happened to you, what to do during COVID, and what to do after COVID. To the point that uh, we're, pre we're, we're educating, we are giving information to people how to protect your household, how to protect your body, what vitamins you need to take, see that? And when you are infected now, this is what you need to do. You need to have thermometer like this. You need to have, uh, you need to have oximeter. Huh? You need to prepare this. Everything that is necessary, they got the necessary right information. No need to worry, brother, because we have a doctor taking care of you. So you don't need to go to the hospital. They will charge you well here for free because this is our ministry now. Grabe. You know, this, this page in my uh, Dulos Medics namin, yung Dulos Medics, uh, we are the one who called the hospital from different provinces so that when we have a patient that is in danger, need to be hospitalized, we know where to go. My, my staff and my medics knows where is the open hospital that we don't need to queue. We can go directly and put that patient into bed. So, hindi na, ang metro, the, the whole Metro Manila is contaminated by, by this virus now. Taas. But in many provinces, zero COVID. So, wala silang hospital na overloaded. There's no, there's no such as overloaded hospital. We have to discover those hospitals who are not overloaded with patients. And then, I have one car. We call it Toyota Grandia. I put oxygen on in, inside. Okay? So from the house, I pick, I pick that patient, put on that car with oxygen, put that oxygen on the patient, and then we brought them to the hospital. You see, we are able to create ministry. You know, you know what happened? One COVID victim that will help, the whole family got saved. The whole family got so. Imagine every day there is a call, Pastor. We have a problem. Okay, Doc Joyce will call it. Okay, you talk to Doc, Dr. Joyce. Okay, so binubuksan lang namin po yung video, pinapanood namin yung pasyente, and then dinadiagnose yung pasyente. So, meron po kaming oximeter, meron kaming thermometer, meron po kaming po pang high blood pressures, meron kaming tank oxygen, kompleto, para kaming hospital. Hindi nila kailangan pumunta ko sila. Kami ang pupunta sa kanila to find out. Because we have a lot of volunteer doctors that are willing to help our members. Tuwan to happen yung mga doctors namin dahil sa bishop. It's good for you to develop this kasi kawawa po talaga yung tao pag nasa hospital. And doon sila sa corridor, sa parking lot, namamatay sila doon. No one is addressing their situation because na-overwhelm na yung hospital, Pastor. This is a good idea, Pastor. Hindi na tayo sasamad ng pabigat tayo. We don't need to go there. But we have a doctor who will take care of them. 
Tapos habang uh, 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 as long as we are able to, you know, to cop cop up, no need to go to hospital. We can take care of them. But the moment there is a sign and a signal that we have to bring the hospital, we know where to go. We don't go one hospital to another hospital and the the patient died on the process. No, before we bring out the the body, the patient from the house to the hospital, we know where to go, and they will be accommodated. You see, the result is evangelistic effort. Ang galing po ko pa dito. Ang dami yung naborn again, ha? Eh, sabi ko nga, Lord, salamat Lord because creativity for effectivity is necessary. Now, we no longer have a problem of winning souls. We use that. We we win a lot of souls because of that. You know, we have one story that the whole family got born again and all their and all their scared neighbors, they said, can we join the the medic so that we could uh, our family members join up our family So, ngayon, kahit hindi na members nga, nagpapatulong na sa amin. Ang dami na board again. Hallelujah. But, that's why I'm telling you, you have to grab this opportunity. Kaya nga kasi, I'm, I'm glad I was able to share this to my people. No? Sabi ko sa kanila, in the middle of this pandemic, let us not forget our mission. This is our opportunity. We could conquer, we could do our mission. We have God's assignment, we have purpose, don't lose that. And let's not forget, we have God, we have His promises, and we have His presence. The vision must continue. That's why you can create. I don't know what's happening to you, but this is the time for you to grab the opportunity to help other people to be a blessing, to take care of them and to minister to them. But you need to find a creative way for you to become effective. Number four, during pandemic, you need to become people-focused. We have to be human-focused. Okay? Not problem focus. Mga kapatid. Para sa akin po, we have to become people focus, human focus. Ha? Huh? Please, please, my brother, the people are in need. They need help. They need compassionate heart like us. They need someone to reach out to them. And sometimes a pastor cannot do anything because he was so focused about himself. The only concern that he has is for his family, for himself. He was, he was bothered by their families. No. You seek the kingdom of God first. You bother with about the kingdom purpose. Then God will be bothered taking care of your family. Alam niyo po, may hirap yung challenge sa akin eh. Part of my testimony is this. During the middle of this pandemic, no, natamaan yung asawa ko. Imagine, may sakit na ako. Dami tang pastor, I need help. Pastor, what should I do? Blah, blah, blah. Pastor, namatay yung asawa ko. Grabe na overwhelmed talaga ako, kapatid. I have, I have money, you know? And dun po sa GCAS account ko, alam niyo po, Inubos ko, tinuyo ko. Hey, Lord. This is the time to help, Lord. Not to hoard. Imagine mo, may sakit ako, kailangan ko ng pera, di ba? Alam niyo ginawa ko? Pinamigay ko yung ano? Pinamigay ko yung pera ko. Lahat? Pinamigay ko. Sige, bigyan mo yun ng 20,000, bigyan mo yun ng 10,000, bigyan mo yun ng 5,000. Sino ba yan? May siya, may nangangailangan ko dito. Ano to, pamigyan mo yung pera. Ito, bigyan mo. Sabi sa akin ng anak ko, Dad, mawala ka na ng pera. Pamigyan mo na lang dyan. Sabi ko, pamigyan mo Without, sabi ko nga, hindi ko alam, ang gagastasin ko wala sa asawa ko, 400,000, si Grace, 6 to 700,000, hindi ko alam. And I want to tell you this, lumabas si Grace, tsaka si, Yomi, si, si ating Jernio, that cost million, wala akong ginastos, kaya chingko. It was taken care of. My God. Sabi ko, Lord, buti na lang, nagtanim ako. Nung tinuyo ko yung pera ko, sabi ni Lord, you pass the test, I'll take care of everything. Nabigla ako, nung lumabas po si Jer, tsaka si Grace, wala po kami binayaran. It was taken care of. By God. Buti na lang, nakapipulpo ako sa ko. 
eh kung ang puro problema yung iniisip ko, alam mo, gagawin ko dapat. Hindi ko mo napapalabas yun ng pera ko, malaki bills ko. Di ba ganun isipin mo? Alam mo, yung time mo ako yung nagtotrouble, I help people. I help people. I help people. Diyo mo, <laughs> buong worship team, buong media team, may kulang-kulang 30. Ako nagbibigay ng vitamins, ako nagbibigay ng gamot. Ha? Ako, tinulungan ko lahat. Hindi makapagtrabaho. Ako nagpapadala ng pag-ubos ang pera ko. Ayun sa Jake, ubos. Pero alam mo, sabi ko, ang saya-saya po. Ama, hindi ko iniisip, paano ko babayaran pala nung binibigay na yung bill sa akin. Bishop, ang running bills ni Grace is almost sabi ng nagtausan. Bishop, ang running bills ng wife is more than 400 to 5,000, 500,000. Sabi ko, don't worry. I have a God who gave me the process and He will never leave me or as long as I do my mission and I conquer my mission. Yun lang, yun lang iniisip ko araw-araw. Sige, okay lang yan. Sige. I have a God with a promise and He will never leave in a percentage. I have a mission to fulfill. I have a, I have a territory to conquer. Yun lang iniisip ko palagi. Guess what? Noong lalabas na sila, Jer, si Jer ang unang lumabas eh. Sabi ko, magkano ba bayaran ko? Sir, everything is taken care of. Now you don't need to worry. Paano ngyari? Everything is taking care of Bishop. Everything is taking care of Ay, salamat sa Diyos. Sabi ko, Lord, si Gagasto Signo na lang si Grace. Paglabas ni Grace, everything is taking care of Bishop. Okay na po mong gala lang. Uuwi na si Grace. Paano mabayaran ko? Wala ko kayong mabayaran, Bishop. Everything is taking care of me. May napaupo po ako ng ganito. Talaga, Lord, ikaw, gusto mo lang talagang ayusin yung resume ko. Di, pa, di, ako, di, ako not, di, di pala ako nahawa. Di balahi mo ko pala, hindi ako nahawa. I saw the hand of the Lord. But during that moment, you will be tested if you will be people focused. Because you're still on your assignment. I don't say no to people. Uh, I don't I don't give up on my assignment. Nakita ko po ito mga kapatid. May problem ako pero I still focus on my assignment. And my assignment is people. Number five. Sulat niyo po ito number five. Always think development at this time. Always think development. Always think development. Every day po, I always think development. Paano ko i-develop yung live stream? Paano ko i-develop ang TV? Paano ko i-develop ang aking discipleship? Paano ko i-develop? And then I realized this. It starts from me. If I want everything to be developed, it starts from me. Okay? You know why your 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 church will be stuck up? Hindi kayo walang mangyayari sa inyo. Kasi wala ka naman i-develop. You don't even develop anything. Kasi you are overwhelmed by the problem. You always look at the negativity. You don't look inside of you. So that you can afford to develop things. Ask this question. Is there anything that you developed during pandemic? No, you allow it to be destroyed by Satan. You allow everything to stop and hold. You, you allow everything to, to die down. Why? You're supposed to develop because you don't think development. Think for the development of your primary child. Every cell leader should think to develop their group, to develop their group. Think development. You need to develop this culture in your ministry. This should be the new way of thinking, development, development, personal development. So I encourage every leaders that I have, hey, come on, you cannot, you cannot improve and develop your ministry if you're not developing yourself. Find every way to develop yourself. Do not let your group to die down and slow down. You don't lower the bar. You have to develop your group. I've been encouraging them every day. Oh, how is yourself? Do you develop yourselves? Okay? You don't expect fruit without development. Development comes first. Growth must come first. And then you will see the fruit. Because many people, many pastors today, they always wanted fruit, but they don't want development. Because development is a process. Fruitful ministry is not an event. It's a process. It's a process of development. 
So you cannot afford not to think about development. Huh? You always think development. Number six, you need to learn how to evolve by non-stop training. You need to evolve. You need to evolve. But it's a non-stop training. I think I have to tell you that the best thing that you can do to your ministry is to establish a non-stop training so that the evolvement, the development can happen. Alam niyo po, we change by training, non-stop. Non-stop ang training natin dapat. You know, most pastors, they stop training because of COVID. Wrong. That's the worst thing that you can do to your ministry. Supposed to be during COVID, dito kayo lalo nag-train. This is the time that you continually, non-stop training to your people. Kaya nga magre-replica kayo ng bagong training na eh. You need to do some replicate. Re-replicate nyo in a different packaging. You know? I do that, no? Pati yung training ko, dati, tra- we used to have training, physical training, yun yun. Zoom na. Okay? okay? Let me share to you what, ito yung mga bagong replics na ginawa ko. No? I told them this. Okay? Ito gawin nyo. Four things, sabi ko sa kanila. Four, uh, uh, try to write it down, ha? Four things. Every time you meet your people, like sales, training, live stream, or whatever meeting they have, the first thing to do is that people should worship the Lord. Let them feel God's presence. Let them be aware that there's God. I'm not talking about singing here, okay? Well, if you have the opportunity to sing, then sing. It helps. But it's not about singing. This is worship. Let the people hear that God is moving. Let the people, let the people receive that God is still working. So every time I meet my people, I let them worship the Lord because of what they hear from the experience of their bishop. So you know what, God? I was so in, the, I was in the middle of darkness. I was saying to them, no. But you know what? The only thing I can say, God, please hold my hands. I don't know what to do. And the people say, oh, thank you, Jesus. You help our bishop. You see, you let these people worship the Lord by your experience. This is not singing, brother. This is real worship. That's the first thing to do. Second is preaching. You need to give them original information. You need to give them encouraging words. Huh? Faith-building words. Kailangan natin, no? So don't just let them experience worship, the presence of the Lord. But please, bring the word of God to these people. Pastor should not be lazy receiving God's revelation. I challenge you. Kaya mo kaya araw-araw gagawa ka ng sermon para ituruan ang mga tao mo. Just to provide words of encouragement, words of motivation, To, uh, original truth so that your people can be strong in faith. This is the time that they need it. If you can do it every day by you, by yourself, it's good. Ako na-realize ko eh. Pare, third wave dito, sabi ko. Pare, mamamatay ito mga member. They will die if I preach only on Sunday. So I have to replicate the Sunday become every day. That's my replication. Na-replicate ko yung Sunday service in every day, every morning, 5.30. So that I could give the word. So, una, worship, and then word. Number three is prayer. Take time to pray. So, I always, nag-replay. Meron ako ngayong Sunday service ng morning, ng, ng Monday morning. Sunday service ng Tuesday morning. We have Sunday service on Wednesday morning. Nag-replay ko yung Sunday. Dinala ko sa araw-araw. Because that's the needs of the, the people today. They need word of encouragement. They need to be strengthened. They need to take away the fear and be transformed into faith. I need that. They need it. Non-stop. We evolved by non-stop training. You look at my, my morning prayer. It becomes a training. It becomes a training non-stop. I train their faith. I train them how to battle their faith. They train ko sila. Kaya yan. Then I give all my testimonies and everybody. Bishop, I, you know what? Sabi nga, tausan ang umatin eh. Sabi ko, Lord, nire-record pa nila para yung mga hindi makasama, papapanood nila. Sabi nila, Bishop, you just don't know how it helped us. You just don't know. 
Alam niyo, meron akong I have one morning meeting. You know what I did? I tell them how to prepare for COVID. I teach them what kind of vitamins they need to take. Huh? I teach them how to uh, take care of their patient. I want you to buy oxygen. I want you to buy this oximeter, thermometer. I want you to give these vitamins. Uh, I even told them how to protect your home by having this UV light. You have to uh, UV light for your comfort room uh, every, uh, one hour, one hour for Imagine, Bishop Orion is sounding like a doctor for them. Replicate. I should replicate myself, look like a doctor, because they can't access doctor. Replica. The old is for Christ, now know what to do. Ha, hallelujah. I, don't, I even teach them the law, the pill health. You know what? When you look, when you go to the hospital, do not pay anything because I know somebody will pay. You know who? Bill Health. You are covered with Bill Health Insurance. Just to know that if you are mild, moderate, severe, and critical, when you are critical, you are entitled to get 700000 to pay everything. If you are severe, you are entitled to get 500000 to pay. If you are moderate, you are entitled to at least four to 300000 If you are if you are mild, then you can only have like 100 to 150,000. If these people don't know, they will be scared to go to the hospital because they were facing half a million pesos for every patient. If they, but I said, according to the law, I teach them the law. I, imagine si Bishop Oriel, pinag-aralan ko yung batas, pinag-aralan ko yung pill health policy. Now all my people are not afraid to go to hospital because sabi ko, May, mil, may kalahating milyon ka, huwag ka mag na sa Sige na, kastusin yung kalahating milyon mo. Because the government allotted budget to this. Why I don't pay? I know the rules. God provided everything for us. Sabi ko nga, oh nga Lord, no. I have to train my people continually. Next, number eight. Number seven. Okay? Again, number six, we evolve by non-stop training. Train nyo sila. Give them instructions, no? Okay? Number seven, you need to create and develop learning culture. Well, that's hard. Alam nyo kung bakit? During COVID pandemic, nobody want to learn. Nobody want to learn. If they don't learn, how can they recreate themselves. You know what? How many pastors today, they don't like learning culture now? They stop learning. Well, I'm so glad that you are here. No? I can teach you. But what if you don't have learning culture? You know what will happen to you if you don't have learning culture? You will not try this truth that I'm sharing to you. Ibu to try. Makikinig ka lang, you'll just listen, then forget it. That's how, how to kill yourself. That's how you to destroy your ministry. You don't learn, you don't learn, and you don't develop a learning culture. Pastor must start the learning culture in your church. You must be willing to tell it to your congregation, to your leaders, a primary church, and sell leaders. I know you don't know what to do, but we could learn. Huh? You just tell, you just need to tell your people. Uh, honestly, I don't know what to do now. But I'm learning, okay? Just be patient. Let's learn together, okay? In fact, you can teach me. You can you can give me some input so that I could, you know, adapt to this, adapt to that. And then all my, especially my primary 12, my primary, my, one of my primary 12, Bishop, you are doing it wrong because you do this. But you can do it right by doing this. Oh, that's a good idea. So you see? I need to create and develop a learning culture starting from myself. I said, okay, okay, okay. Eh, isang, isang member, sabi niya, sabi ko, oh, but ano, but, sabi sa bishop, I'm having our time, I have no job. You have no job, why? Because pastor, alam mo, pandemic, walang pagtrabaho ka No, no, that's not true. Do you know what is online job application? You know that? Di po, pastor eh. Okay. 
Sabi bro, tulong mo ito. Hindi siya maroon ng online job application, online interview. Tapos, pwede ako, yeah, pwede ako ma-interview online. Because people don't know. Ha? Huh? Sabi niya, Pastor, I'm willing to learn. Got it. Ayun, after a week, sabi niya sa akin, Big Shop, Ajara Jack, tama ka. Pwede pa tayong online interview tsaka online ano. May, so what's your job? Online job din, Pastor. Oh, good. Magkano siya alam mo? Enough to survive, Big Shop. Good. Nakita ko pala, mga kapatid. Marami mga church, wala tayong learning culture. Wala ho. Ha? We, we have to nga nga culture. Because the pastor let them do that. Ha? Wait until the COVID is over. That's the culture. Wait until the COVID is, is over. Kaya e, paano if the, 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 the COVID will stop at after five years? No. You need to learn how to do discipleship now on, the, on this different atmosphere. You need to learn new ways how to evangelize people. How to decide new ways para learning talaga to. Huh? Number eight. Okay? Hallelujah. Number eight is this. Ito kailangan, kailangan nyo talaga to. You need a higher level of thinking. Higher level of thinking now. Huh? You cannot afford to be ordinary this time. You need to have a higher level of thinking, higher level of skill, higher level of capability, and higher level of capacity. Next level tayo. Para may COVID na, bumaba pa yung utak mo. Sumayad pa sa lupa, ano naman yun? You need to, uh, you need to have a higher level of thinking. Meaning to say, you need more wisdom, more understanding, you know, more knowledge. Hallelujah. Eh, sa totoo lang, mga kapatid, during the darkest moment of my life, ala, pinag-aralan ko lahat ng mga scientific, according sa doctor, according sa research, I, uh, now I know what is COVID. Now, how I, did, I should I defend myself? Now I know how to do that. But how to help other people? I need to know higher level of thinking. Higher level of skill. Higher level of capability. Because every skill that you have in the past, every capability in the past, every way of thinking in the past is not working now. You use that, it will not work. New level of thinking. New level of skills. New level of capability. New level of knowledge, wisdom. And new level kaya nga pag wala kayong learning culture, yari kayo. Okay? Lalo na yung new level of capability. Ha? May capable ka ba na kahit may COVID? Lalago church mo? You tell me, kaya mo? Eh noong ka pa hindi lumalago eh, lalo ngayon may COVID. But if you increase the level of your thinking, level of your skill and capability, you have to find a way to discover that. You have to do everything you can. You have to beg God. Ask God, Lord, give me. Give me more, Lord, more wisdom, more idea. And it's clear in the Bible. My people is destroyed because of lack of capability. They lack knowledge and understanding. They are ignorant. Pastor, you're in the middle of pandemic and you're ignorant. You are full of darkness. Come on. You're supposed not to do that. Number nine. I want you to get this. Give your people rewarding experience. Give your people rewarding experience. Even in digital platform, your, your cell group must experience rewarding experience. Your discipleship must be a rewarding experience. Your G12 meeting must be a rewarding experience. Your live stream every Sunday must be a rewarding experience. Yung bang, when people come to you and you are trying to minister to them, it's a rewarding experience. Oh, they know that oh, the, the word is so fresh. Wow, the word is very encouraging. Wow, the word. You know what? 
every time I meet you, I pray that, Lord, I pray that when I meet with my brothers from New York and the rest of America, I pray that it is always a rewarding experience. Huh? Yung bang, when you come to this mentoring, you said, buti na lang naka-attend ako. Gande. Alam mo, ganda nang natutunan ko. Now, you always come, right? Pero the moment you you board your people, you you know, you don't minister to them properly, and it never becomes a rewarding experience, do you think your people will come to you and be attracted to your ministry? You tell me. You tell me. You know what? I begin to preach like pra- very practical sermon every Sunday. You know what happened? My YouTube, I got now 55,000 subscribers. One day, my, my, my uh, Rupino told me, Bishop, alam mo ba na kung ilan na subscriber mo ngayon? Sabi ko, ilan na? It's 55,000 na. From different parts of the world. Mayroon ka sa Saudi. You have, you have Saudi people who subscribe. Uh, uh, we, we also have some from India. I said, how do I can understand my Taglish? I don't know, but, but they subscribe, Pastor. And then they are sending messages. So I go, wow. Because my thinking is this, Lord, if I preach to the pulpit, I go to, I go to live stream, help me to make it a rewarding experience. You know, many people today, they want to become a cell leader, they want to become primary 12, and they want to meet people to, to teach them. But the question is, yes, you can teach, but is it rewarding? Is it enough to convince these people to go back? Is it enough for these people to destroy, uh, to, to walk in faith and not in fear? They, they need to receive ministry that is rewarding. Kasi Rich, para sa akin, kapatid, rewarding experience talaga yung habon ng tao ngayon. You know, the, 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 the world is too dark, it's too desperate. They need a place, they need the pastors uh, that is rewarding in their ministry. Very rewarding dapat tayo. Yung bang si Pastor Sulit, pare pag sumama kay Pastor Sulit ka dyan. Huh? Well, you, know, you know when you go to that meeting, oh man, I tell you, it's very rewarding. Dapat ganun tayo lahat. Huh? So, ikaw ba si Pastor Sulit? Are you the pastor where people said, oh, I like that pastor. You know, I like my cell leader. Why? Every time we meet together, I promise you it's very rewarding. Pare, COVID na nga, wala pang rewarding experience. Huh? Can you imagine? In the middle of the pandemic, the ministry is not rewarding. Provide rewarding experience. Produce rewarding experience. So you cannot produce rewarding experience unless you think. Huh? Sabi ko nga, unless you think. Unless you are very people focus unless you have a higher level of thinking skill and ability ha huh? mga kapatid unless you are not unless there is non stop learning from your people and on your part hallelujah let there be rewarding experience hallelujah and last and final no we need to capture every opportunity right now yan ang pinakahuli. You need to capture every opportunity. Natitinig niyo ako, mga patid. That's the final. We develop ourselves. Ay, sa totoo lang, mga patid, for the sake of opportunity. Ha? Sa totoo lang, we replicate everything because there's so much opportunity now. Ha? We maintain our right culture. We create something Because we will be having opportunity. Huh? We become people focused because of that opportunity. We always think development because we don't want to miss that opportunity. We evolve by non-stop training because we have the opportunity. Learning culture, higher level, for the sake of opportunity. So let me ask this question. Do you miss the opportunity or you can grab opportunity? Well, the first nine, you have to do that if you want to catch that opportunity in front of you. Mga kapatid, hindi ho totoo. It's not true that we will become zero during COVID. That's not true. In fact, opportunity will be given to you by God. If you are prepared. No? If you have the right mindset. Remember this. The same God 
the same promise, the same promise, presence of God is with you. The same, huh? As I was with Moses, I will be with you. The same, yeah. The same God, the same promise, the same presence of God. But look at Joshua, the same mission, the same mission, get the territory. Huh? Joshua is facing a great opportunity. So God said to Joshua, replicate mo si Joshua, si Moses. Anyway, as I was with Moses, I saw I will be with you. Replicate mo. Continue to learn. Ha? Obey. Obey. This book of the Lord should not depart from your mouth. Ha? Meditate on it day and night. And by carefully obeying everything that is written in it, you shall succeed and you shall prosper. Diba? Ito yung pinag-usapan natin. Eh. Pastors, nobody will be zero if you listen to this message. If you take note and do it, huh? Please don't just write it down in your in your notes. Yung binigay sa inyo sa sampu ngayon, it will take you six months to one year to do that. But it's worth doing. It's worth doing. Huh? Uh, you know what? This thing was given to me by God during my darkest moment. Hinukay uh, sa hinukay ko kay Lord yan. Yan ang pinakita sa akin. The Lord showed me this is how to do it or yan. Huh? Oh, ang dami ko gusto siya sa inyo. Sa so next time, so, so, is, is, uh, I will teach you next week yung ano, the power of subtraction. Oh, kakatulong sa iyo. Less is better. Less is better. Tignan nyo. So next meeting, abangan nyo na lang yan. Ha? Uh, I pray that this morning is a very rewarding morning to everyone. I'm glad and I tell that you are such a beautiful people with God. <laughs> We have the same God. We have the same promise from God. We have the same God who promises presence so that our mission, our vision, our God-given assignment can be accomplished no matter what. Hallelujah. Kaya mga kapatid, ha? laban lang tayo. Pag may problema, just tell yourself. Oriel, pagpatagdag ng resume yan. Dati, tagapatay ka lang ng diyon. You just kill lion and bear. Now you're killing COVID. Ha? You're killing the giant now, ha? So now, one day, I will be facing another problem situation. I got my resume getting better. I got something to be to remember. No, I got something to remember, and it up to empower me and encourage me to face my new challenges in my life. Remember this: every giant that you face, there is a throne waiting for you. Okay, so don't give up. Fight. Okay. Be sure that inside of you, there is God, there's the promise, there is the presence of God. There's the assignment, the mission, and the vision that is inside out, not outside in. If you practice outside in, you die. But if you practice inside out, you're sitting based on what is inside of you, you will look, yours, look at your situation in a proper perspective. So again, my brother and sister, thank you so much for this day. I pray that every one of you continue to fight the good fight of faith. Bawal mamatay ng humihingi ng tawad lang, nagmamakaawa, nagsosorry, huwag kayo mamamatay ng gano'n ha. Pakiusap ko lang sa inyo ha. Pag namamatay tayo, sabihin natin, I fight the good fight of faith. I have finished the course. <laughs> I pray every one of you will die Finishing the course, okay? Finishing the race, fighting the good fight of faith. Uh, whether I live, I live unto the Lord. Whether I die, I die unto the Lord. I belong to the Lord. Hallelujah. Can I pray for you? Lord, thank you. Because Lord, no matter what happened, thank you because we have the same God of Moses, Joshua, of Abraham. We have the same God, Lord. The same God that gave promises to us, Lord. And that promise, Lord, is with power, with anointing, so that we could go through every difficult situation. Lord, thank you because you promised us that you will never leave us, not forsake us, Lord. Lord, hold our hands. Help us to walk with your presence, Lord. Panginoon, most of all, you've given us the purpose of our life. You've given us our assignment. 
You have given us the reason why we live here on earth and why we still live. It's because of our assignment, because of our mission, because of the vision to be conquered. I pray that every one of us, Lord God, will be strong and courageous during this moment, Lord. I pray that all the things that we have shared, Lord, I pray that during the process we could learn more, we could replicate, Lord, we could increase and develop the better pure culture of our churches, Lord, and so that we could grab this opportunity, Lord. Thank you. Bless every pastors and wife, Lord, who join this meeting. Bless their church, preserve and protect them. Let them conquer and fulfill their vision. Thank you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, before, uh, before we close, let's, let's ask, uh, let's share, no? Yung ating mga takeaway para we could still encourage people. Okay? Can we ask that? Is it possible? Uh, pwede ba mag-share kayo ng yung mga takeaway? Ha? I'd like to start from Pastor Edgar Banaga. Pastor Edgar, what is your takeaway this morning? Can you share your takeaway? Bishop, good to see you again. Well, thank uh, you. And uh, I want to uh, say thank you for uh, reminding us of our assignment. And uh, I was um, really looking at uh, your uh, looking at your uh, uh, sharing and your testimony with regards to David and Goliath. And uh, it shows me that uh, in every situation of our life, whether we're experiencing blessing, blessedness from the Lord or trials in our Lord, uh, in, in the sight of God, all of those trials and problems are uh, in addition to our resume. And uh, I, I praise God for that. And uh, for the sake of time, uh, I, I, I believe that the number two principle of replication that you mentioned had spoken to me, and that is maintaining your right culture. And we, we should not uh, develop a bad culture or not doing anything. So I have, I have to uh, keep the culture of evangelism, the culture of discipleship, training and conquest, and, uh, and again, uh, for that reminder of worship, prayer, and, uh, and, and this must be maintained. So thank Amen. you, Bishop. Galing, galing. Ganda ng take away ni Kuya Edgar, no? Thank you so much, Pastor. Uh, let's see from Bishop Johnson. Bishop Johnson, can you share something to us? Yes, thank you, Bishop. Wow, uh, I just really was touched by your testimony of what you went through in your family. My boy, I praise God that you all are okay and you've come through that big trial. Um, wow. <laughs> I had no idea that you were going through that at that time. So God's merciful and he's gracious. And um, you, couldn't, you couldn't go because you haven't finished your assignment or your vision and what God has for you. So I'm so glad about that and so thankful God added to your resume as as God added to David's resume that you conquered the virus. So thank God for that and and your safety. Just uh, really uh, an awesome awesome night. And one thing, just want to share this that you you shared was replicate rapidly. You know, replication. You know, the virus replicates, but we need to replicate in the kingdom rapidly and uh, we need to think that way I liked all the things you shared about how to do that and accomplish that uh, but replicate rapidly we really have to have that mindset in order to replicate rapidly don't fear but let's conquer even as David conquered uh -huh. wow thank you so much Bishop Johnson uh, uh, let's let's listen to uh, no, Pastor Abe Pastor Abe can you share your takeaway this morning? Oh, this evening pala. Morning kasi dito, I'm sorry. Eh, Pastor Abe, ikaw, ano ba ang iyong takeaway ngayon? Oh, welcome back out. And we're glad to have you again. It's good to hear your voice. Uh, these 10 items that you shared are wonderful. We should never be lazy during this time of lockdown. It should make us more productive and fruitful and faithful to the Lord. Yeah, it's encouraging. To know that your family members who were hospitalized or go home or probably on the way home. 
Salamat po. At, nakauwi na, nakauwi na po. Kuya Abby, sa bahay na kayo. Amen. Uh, salamat po Bishop sa opportunity to hear the testimony of uh, Rufino. Sometimes feel a big loss when a young man like him passes away. And uh, thank you po. Everything really uh, uh, was presented wonderfully for us. Kaya we will uh, focus back on our notes and what you have shared for us. Good to see you again. God bless you po, Bishop. Wow, thank you so much. Pastor Pong, ikaw naman. Saka si Pastor Roela, ano bang yung ano? Ano bang yung take home ngayon? Sige nga. Wala ka pang ano? Bishop, salamat po at uh, magaling na yung buong pamilya. <clears throat> Ang uh, take home ko po ngayon, huwag mamatay nang humihingi lang ng tawad. <laughs> Talagang uh, oh, powerful. <laughs> ano ka mga? Si Ella na. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Bishop. Thank you for that powerful uh, reaching for today. My take home is Number one is culture of waiting. Right culture, maintain that right culture, uh, which we did by the grace of God. We follow the right DNA of the vision and the evolve a non-stop training for one year since uh, May, uh, March 2020. We did the non-stop training, the evangelism, discipleship, and the training by Zoom, the live class, we had five times live class up to now encounter. We have encounter on Saturday again. And then Destiny 1 and 2, Destiny 3 and 4, a three wave, three levels. And then uh, last two Saturdays, we had the encounter, re encounter. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the uh, leadership encounter. So uh, this was the first time that we had re encounter with ourselves. So we start changing everything, develop, start from us, starting from us. So we did it, Bishop, thank you so much. And also, uh, we will have Destiny 5 and 6 on May 9. So it's non really evolving a non-stop training. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Talaga to sila po, you know? <laughs> Very <laughs> busy. <laughs> I think you better look into the church because you can replicate something in, in their church. You better look at them. No, find out. Ano ginagawa nyo? Ba't kayo gagaling yung mag-replicate yan? I think we could learn from Pastor Pope. Huh? We could learn. Okay, so you know, uh, let's listen from Pastor Ronald and Michelle. Can we hear from you? You two couple, beautiful couple. Bishop, thank you for sharing your testimony po sa amin. Thank you so much. And um, ang takeaway ko po for tonight, yung mas, uh, it became clearer to me uh, why David was able to conquer those giants or those um, uh, difficulties in his life. First and foremost, because he was anointed. He was chosen by God and anointed to become a king. So there's already a finish, finish line for him or finish um, plan for him to become a king. And um, that is a, um, a confirmation. That is actually also a comforting um, truth that for each and every one of us who are here, we are chosen. And there is a promotion of becoming a uh, uh, a king, a queen, whatever it is, it is good. And thank you, thank you also, Bishop, because um, because of your testimony, uh, truly it gave such encouragement and motivation for us because we have seen, we have uh, known your difficulties, yet you are here encouraging each and every one and motivating us. All the points that you have shared, these are all positive. Development, grabbing opportunities, um uh what else higher level of something learning so even in difficult situations we should strive or thrive to do more do uh uh develop us 
to become better and better in what we are doing. And also, Bishop, thank you for reminding us once again that even in difficult situations, we have the same vision, mission, and uh, just a different method this time, but we cannot stop. We cannot never give up. Thank you. Uh -huh. Galing talaga ni Michelle. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Kung ano sinabi niya. <laughs> um, so, I'm Bishop Tao dito. Ano po. Thank you very much po. And I also thank the Lord God po dun sa number one, uh, you, are, you and your family uh, and the church were able to survive. And now, um, we understand that you are being upgraded by the Lord God. And, um, and pangalawa po yung pag-share niyo po dun sa Um, yung testimony po ni Rufino no no yung uh, that's really great kaya ako magko-confess na po ako simula bukas para uh, pag namatay ako hindi na ako sorry ng sorry <laughs> pero that's really a great viewpoint bishop when you said that that a lot of people might be on their deathbed instead of saying lord i fought the i fought the good fight of faith but instead lord sorry because i didn't do the things that you wanted me to do of course nobody's perfect But I am actually uh, uh, thankful also no, that we are um, also for the leaders of our church, the primary leaders po namin. And, um, you know, um, there are actually uh, uh, excuses, could be excuses for us to stop doing what we are doing. But we praise the Lord God because uh, we're still learning a lot, but we had seen that we had the, our leaders had also upgraded, and even our staff. Uh, upgraded in the things that we are doing. And right now, um, in the um, Facebook memory, uh, the stuff that we had done last year are, are coming up, right? And compared to what we were able to do last year and today, we are thankful that we were able to do things, again, out of God's grace. But two things, Bishop, that I really uh, um, somehow resonated with me today, right, is when you said that uh, we need to keep on creating, you know, because creativity... Uh, for effectivity so you know um, I can it's like I can relax I have a tendency when things are doing okay when are, things are doing okay that I just want to maintain the level yeah but uh, uh -huh. right now that uh, thank you for that push and then um, here's the challenge that I have um, that I need to think and to pray and to um, you know and to, to to sort it out and also with uh, to lead our church to that That in everything that we do, we give a uh, we give everyone you know a rewarding experience, you know. Oh, so when you said that, when you said that, it really like pop, you know. Um, so how are we going to to do that? Yeah. So we praise the Lord God, Bishop. Thank you very much. Wow, that's so nice, good, good testimony, rewarding experience necessary. Uh, let's hear from Pastor Nestor, no? from Bronx. Pastor thank Nestor, you, Bishop. Namiss ka namin, Bishop. Oo, oh, namiss ko rin kayo. <laughs> thank you po. Thank you po sa buhay niyo. But Bishop, simple lang po. Yung uh, capturing every opportunity ay nag-strike sa akin. No? So, this pandemic ay napakaraming opportunity binibigyan ng Lord. Marami kaming mga cell group na nag-win. So, what an opportunity. And another word, Bishop, na mag-resonate sa akin siguro... Until uh, the Lord will uh, take me home, ay yung uh, discover, develop. Yeah. Huh? So, yun po, Bishop. Salamat po. At uh, kung gusto mo kina Pastor Roger and uh, Grace. God bless po. Ah, I will, I will. Thank you so much, Pastor Ness. Now, let's go to Canada. O, oh, Pastor Ano, Pastor Siludim. Pwede natin hingan ng testimony o take home si Pastor Siludim. Praise God. Uh, so, um... <clears throat> Ang aking takeaway is that uh, when you said that um, the Lord will allow us to live until we finish the mission. It is true that even though there is a pandemic, actually when we were, when we were evaluating how many people we have shared the gospel with, compared with um, before COVID, we have shared the gospel more during the time. <laughs> Galing, no? At, uh, Galing. Um, number of um, number of life plus namin, new life plus that I do not know um, is uh, right right now is ongoing because we continue with uh, what you have told us before 
continue the training, keep on doing the training. And we have seen the result and we praise God for that. So um, isa pang, um, isa pang take away namin here is uh, yung um, maintain your high culture. Um, kasi without that culture, we will, um, and like I always tell um, the people with me, it is like physics. When we stop, you need to have a strong force because the static force is you have to have a strong static force in order to move that vehicle. But when it is moving, the dynamic force, you have a little force in order to keep that, that car moving. So you know, always nasabi ko that we need to maintain this high culture. And um, praise God that we can see the, the harvest. And um, we are still ongoing and we, our next cycle will be in June again, but we are still on, on doing our training. And thank you for that. Thank you for your life, Bishop. Thank you for telling us about Rufino. I, um, I, I personally praise God because of what Rufino did to us here in Canada, how he presented how to do the life class properly. And, 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 and that's the reason why I ask you before, send somebody in order for us to do the life class and Rufino was the one you sent and we we, we praise God for for the for the life of Rufino. Praise God. Okay, praise the Lord. Thank you so much for that. And jump up si, ano, si Pastor Choi. Pastor Choi, jump up ba? Wala na si Choi. Tsaka si Finn, wala na. Wala na. Okay, eh di siya na lang, pakigala lang natin siya, no? Uh, yung taga-Canada pa, si, ano? You know, Pastor Clova, andiyan pa si Pastor Clova? Ha? Yes, Bishop. Uy, Mami, wala. Mami, wala. Mami, wala. Mami, wala. Mami, wala. Yes, we are very encouraging and uh, we're happy to see you back. Uh, the moment that I see you and uh, mention your testimony, it's so heartwarming. Um, I was uh, focusing on this uh, point on human focus, not problem focus. So right now, uh, we do communicate on glasses. Lahat halos sa online lang. We haven't met uh, on a physical uh, church uh, simply because uh, our old church, they uh, opt not to rent to rent the, the place. So we are online. But uh, nonetheless, uh, because of this uh, uh, encouragement from you and uh, our people are here, we always uh, make it a point that uh, Zoom or whatever online training would be just like uh, we, we are on one place. So we look at the, uh, uh, the need, the, the compassionate side. Uh, of uh, of our, of our of heart and to reach them out as much as possible and we don't say no to people so mas lalo ho kami dumami during wow. very good yes very good ganda yeah ma meron at niyo may mga testimony may maganda pang nangyayari ha hindi puro hindi puro pangit pero magaganda yung mga testimony uh, we would like to hear from pastor leo also from canada pastor leo jack baba can you share to us, Pastor Leo? What is your takeaway? So, praise the Lord, Bishop. We may pinagdaanan kayo. Mayroon din akong pinagdaanan. But uh, we still keep moving, you know, according to the plans and purpose of God. Because God has a, ano po, mayroon talagang, God has a plan for every situation. Uh -huh. So, Yeah. So, yung nakita ko po rito, ano po, ay uh, yung mga binanggit nyo sa sampung yun ay talagang nagbibigay uh, sa amin ng, ano po, ng magandang uh, involvement in order to continue and move according to the plans and purpose of God. Praise God. Amen. Thank you so much, Kaya Leo. Oh, si, si Romy. Romy Kusa, ikaw sa <laughs> Hindi mo tapat na langit. Pastor Romy, can you share? What is your takeaway, Pastor Romy? Magandang 
araw po, gabi sa lahat, no? Uh, isang opportunity na nakumpita ko ni Bishop Rene ng Wisdom. Praise God. Uh, itong number 10 po, uh, capture every opportunity ang aking uh, nice share. Uh, malala ko lang po last March 2020. Nagpipray ko ako doon sa airport at uh, Lord, why you allow this COVID? May dalawang revelation po ako na receive eh. Una, God is calling attention of billions of people across the globe na tumawag na sa Kanya. And the second one is God is calling the attention of all His people to become serious in their calling. Lalo po sa evangelism. At dito po sa capture opportunity, sa kabila po sa aming probinsya ay uh, binalik po sa 30 last, last Tuesday. At wala nang wala nang bisita sa bahay no pero this last April 3 naka-open kami ng outreach sa isang city and this coming April 24 pangunahan natin prayer for the province and nation ah uh, at uh, magandang auto opportunity dahil po lang itong covid na ito ay eh, ah uh, marami hong nabor na din so yun lang po at uh, Gustong gusto ko tong capture every opportunity. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Ah, uh, pa- pakinggan din natin siya no. Let's go to Joey. Pwede ba mag-share ka ng take away mo? Si Joey dumaan din to sa bakbakan eh. Ha? <laughs> uh, Joey, kung ano ba take away mo ngayon, Joey? Maraming gulay itong hinarap eh. <laughs> Medyo leon pa lang. <laughs> Well, parang sinamarize ko lahat yung sinabi mo eh. In a sense, parang uh. um, to replicate a culture of development, creativity, training, improvement, making a rewarding experience out of creating and capturing every opportunity. Guling ho bro. Sinamarize ho. Ay, hindi ko na take note. <laughs> But uh, what really struck me, of course, was uh, a rewarding opportunity. Because okay. it's not all about us; it's about the people, and uh-huh. if you can make them, you know, feel the reward of winning a soul, of raising a disciple, of uh, 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 being able to help in these COVID times, like you did, and even the rewarding experience of seeing someone like Rufino give glory to God. Even in his death, it is something that uh, we, people will treasure for the rest of their life. Uh-huh. So hopefully, every preaching ganon din. Amen. Very the- rewarding. Tama, ang ganda. Ganda ang tegawin mo, Joey. Ang ganda. O siya na naman. Let's listen Welcome to back. Pastor. Let's talk. Pero pa, Joey? Hindi. Welcome back. O, salamat, salamat. Ha? Okay, si Pastor na naman. Last two, last two tayo. Last two. Al, uh, uh, si, you know, si... Pastor Elmer, tsaka si you know, Eloy. Eloy, can you share? Elmer, please. Hello po, Bisha. First of all po, um, we, the, the whole time that you're going through the struggles, we are with you in spirit po. We've been praying for you and your family. Even po, we have a member in our church right now who's coming, and she, they have a cell group in MCI, And she told me to let Bishop know that the whole MCI church is praying for them. So, uh-huh. so um, like to let you know also, Bishop, that we love you so much and all the experiences that you've gone, gone through. Alam namin, it's, it's your promotion. And it's also our promotion because we know your experience. Now, if you can overcome that, people who follow you just like us will overcome. Amen. And, uh, for, amen. <laughs> So for today, Bishop, um, my my greatest takeaway for tonight is when you face problem, see it as part of your assignment. And as part of your assignment, it is an additional to your resume, and it is an upgrade of your faith. And you have to face it with faith so you will not be paralyzed because fear will paralyze you. 
And the God who is with David is the same God who is with me right now and with us, with everyone. And it's the same promise that God has given David. It's the same promise that we are that we are holding on. So in the middle of this war, of COVID war and everything that's happening, we always see the silver lining around it. And with your experience, Bishop, I, we've never been there, but you, you were there. And as our leader, like what I said, if you can overcome those people who follow, you will overcome. So we yes. see... Yes. <laughs> so, so Bishop, we see it po na opportunity to, to learn continuously and hear from your, your testimony na everything is possible and nothing is impossible with God. So praise God for your life po. We love you. Hallelujah. Uh, El Merga, what do you say? Well, uh, Bishop, thank you so much for being here. I've been looking forward for this. And uh, while uh, you, you're teaching, I was looking at your eyes and I see courage. So that's my takeaway. And I will courageously watch this video again and learn again. We learn. Thank you for being so uh, courageous. Mm -hmm. I'll take that from my heart. And uh, yeah, and also as we gather our takeaway it is also an opportunity for all of us to give away to give away <laughs> <laughs> let's continue to, away. to bless the ministry of dulos uh, for christ let us be generous and uh you can you can give directly to to their church or to bishop or if you are here in the united states you can also go uh go through uh, paypal or zelle you know um we heard that how the uh, Bishop Oriel uh, as leading this battle. It's not just the battle of their church, but the whole nation that mm -hmm. is carrying and and their experience and their victory is being also um, is ringing out the faith that they're practicing. Uh, it's blessing all of us here in as we being equipped. So this is not this is not just a mentoring for church growth. This is advancing the kingdom of God, and we are all together in this, and we're stronger when together. So. Let, they, let us take this opportunity to, uh, to bless their ministry, mm -hmm. to bless the family. So our takeaway, also there's a giveaway. <laughs> so thank you, Bishop, for everything. We love you so much. God bless you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, last na tayo, last. Uh, let's call, ano, Charlie, Charlie, pwede ba yung last? Please share to us. Ano yung takeaway mo, Charlie, please? Um, well, thank you so much for the testimony. Um, it's really encouraging. Um, I didn't know all the details, but thank you for sharing that to us. And we, we, we do love you. Um, wish that, um, you know, we, I was able to um, do more than just praying for you. But of course, the opportunity to give is there. And as far as what you shared to us, you know, you, you started talking about virus replicating. And what came to my mind is, you know, virus is able to replicate in your body because you don't have an antibody. You cannot fight back. So it dominates your life. And now on the other side, the 10 things that you shared to us tonight is like something that we need to build antibody in our lives from being unfruitful. And, you know, these are very practical things you shared to us. And that's something that I really enjoy hearing from you is things that are very practical. Sometimes, you know, you hear a lot of things that are I don't want to say religious and very spiritual, you know, and those things are important. But what you shared to us oftentimes is very practical and something that is simple. And I think that's why, you know, it's easy for anyone to hear and just put their minds to it. And, and of course, being led by the Holy Spirit, they can practice it and they can grow. And, and your, your ministry is an example for that. And uh, thank you for sharing these things. And, uh, you know, in, in our place, in my life right now, and I think it's... Uh, it's really a great uh, pointers that you shared to us. Uh, like, you know, we are in the point of uh, looking for a place. Um, uh, we, I've been preparing for it and, you know, with, with discussions that we have. And uh, just like I was able to visit a place today and uh, it's really a nice place, po uh, possibly be able to start um, doing something there. But uh, it's really an encouragement what you shared to us uh, to put that in practice with the people that God has given us right now and, and connecting with us. Um, just to give a report, like last time we gathered, we were about 50 people uh, during our Easter gathering. And, uh, and so, you know, it, it's, been, it's been a great challenge, like you said, during COVID season. Um, and people have opinions about COVID. And for me, like, 
I, I don't have time to think of that. I have time to think about what I need to do and, and just doing what God called us to do and, and stepping out in, in faith like you have shown us. And so thank you so much for teaching these practical points. And that will you know, encourage all of us, including myself and, and what we can do here uh, in D.C. area. So thank you so much, Bishop. Hallelujah. Do you know that once I share the 10 points of that, it will spread all around the Philippines, that ideas? And honestly, it will become a culture, honestly. And when we, when we begin to share this to you, I want you to share that to your church, what is needed to be done, okay? Because we have no other way, but we really have to recreate ourselves to the, continually, okay? Non-stop training, non-stop learning. That's the only way to do it. I hope as I close that every one of you will be constantly in good condition. Please be safe. Uh, please be careful. Don't, don't be infected by this virus. Uh, protect as much as you can, as better as you can. And most of all, never give up on your assignment because God, we have the same God. We, they, we have the same promise. We have the same presence. But we also have the same vision and missions. Okay? Go and conquer. And I believe that's for you. That's for everyone. Okay? So see you again at the next meeting after two weeks. And let's have let's believe that God is still doing great things for everyone. Okay, so I'll see you around. Okay, hopefully I could go back to the U.S. No, I pray that I could go back to California and New York. The mimis ko na ang America. San taon na ako din nakakapunta yan. Sempre dadan din ako sa ano sa Toronto, de ba? Sa sa tropa ni Ramon dadan ako yan. I promise. Bas, 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 ano na, pwede na ako lumipad. Dilipad na ako agad. No? Hindi na ako. Ano, Tatakada na si Pong. Nandun na ako sa gate nila. Huh? <laughs> okay, mapasundo na lang ako po. Sa New York, si, si, ano, si, si Kuya Abe tagasundo ko dyan. At saka si Elber. No? Pag ako nandiyan sa, ano, sa Toronto naman, yan, lagi si Ramon. No? So let's, let's continue to pray. Let's continue to ano, uphold one another. Ha? Oy, yung mga bagong mga natututunan ng replica nyo dyan na magaganda, ipasa nyo sa kapatid nyo. Ha? Uh, pasahan tayo ng mga magagandang ginagawa ni Lord. And those ideas, uh, God's ideas, you can share it to other people so that we could rapidly uh, replicate many things. Okay? So again, this is Bishop Ariel. Salamat po sa inyo. Keep on praying for us. Uh, sabi nga ay walang susuko. Okay? Tuloy-tulong lupa tayo. God bless you. Apply nyo ng Panginoon. Thank you. Shout out to everybody. We love you. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Bishop. Yung iba, nakapagsalita, ha? Thank you, Bishop. Uh, we don't have that much time, out. Sa susunod kayo naman, ha? Yes, Bishop. Oh, sige. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you, po. Thank you, thank thank you Bishop. God bless, Bishop. Bless. God bless you, all. God bless you. Bye-bye.